Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be back home. Uh, I am a native of Las Cruces and so, so happy to be back in Doniana County. And matter of fact, grew up about a half a mile away uh, here and so proud to be back here talking about how New Mexico has become indeed more competitive and how we have changed the uh, culture of our state. And I believe in many, many positive ways. As a personal uh, matter, I talk about how important this industry is to us. And uh, first, I want to thank Dr. Hines for the wonderful leadership she's providing and uh, puts, always puts on a great conference. And of course, NMSU, uh, my mom, uh, just on a personal matter, used to work at the physical science laboratory, retired there. So when we talk about the importance of this industry to the state of New Mexico, obviously it has a profound impact on our state and the many people that work in the industry, but personally, it had an impact on our family and I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity to try to promote this industry as much as possible. You know, New Mexico, uh, four years ago, five years ago now, uh, that we've been into this job was a much different place than what it is today. Uh, New Mexico uh, had some issues, quite frankly, and in terms of its competitiveness in dealing with job expansion, private sector job expansion. New Mexico, uh, September 13th of, of 2014, according to a Washington Post article, was ranked as the most dependent state on federal dollars. And that's, that's, a, you know, that's just a fact. Um, with the situation that's going on in Washington, D.C. now, the, the, um, certainly the pressures that are being put on the discretionary part of the federal budget, which we all know about, DOE, DOD in particular, it was very, very important for us to create an environment here in New Mexico which brought some of the best technologies and commercialized them and grew our private sector rather than being so reliant on the federal sector. Make no mistake about it. We do need these installations, not only from a national security standpoint, we will always try to fight for what we have uh, here in New Mexico in terms of those assets. But what has New Mexico done to make itself more competitive and more business friendly? Well, five years ago, we inherited one of the largest structural deficits, the largest structural deficit in our state's history, a half a billion dollars, almost 10% of our state's budget. We also were facing a situation where the private sector jobs were indeed falling and our tax climate was among the most onerous in the country. According to one publication, we were ranked 51st in the entire nation in terms of tax competitiveness behind the District of Columbia. It was obvious to us that we needed to do something to make New Mexico a much more inviting place for private investment and how we could commercialize some of these best ideas that were emanating from our national labs and institutions of higher learning. And so we embarked upon a program to make New Mexico more competitive and certainly more friendly to private sector investors. How did we do it? Well, we did a number of things. It was very, very important to us to recognize that our tax structure needed reform. And so we started with that. That was the most important and most immediate thing we needed to do. As I mentioned before, we were ranked 51st five years ago in terms of tax competitiveness. Happy to report that today Ernst & Young last year ranks New Mexico the best place in the entire Western US when it comes to the effective tax rate in which to manufacture a product. We went 51st now to best in the Western US, according to Ernst & Young. CNBC about eight weeks ago made New Mexico the most improved state in the entire country when it came to its tax structure. And then finally, about three weeks ago, Kiplinger's put out its new ranking about where states rank in terms of their tax structure and competitiveness for private sector investors. And guess what? New Mexico now is number eight in the entire country when it comes to tax competitiveness. And we're very, very proud of that. What a major improvement uh, from five short years ago. So what were the things that we did? In the introductory comments, certainly highlighted a few of them. Our corporate tax rate was reduced dramatically. It was ranked among the highest in the country. Our business tax rate was the third highest in the country to be exact. 
we reduce those overall. Second, for those who manufacture a product in New Mexico, as we phase in this new law, what's called the single sales factor, you will only be taxed on those sales made within New Mexico. Essentially, so if you are exporting 99% of your product or all of it, you basically have no corporate income tax liability here in New Mexico if you are manufacturing a product and selling most of that product abroad. Third thing we did, we eliminated the GRT for businesses that are involved in aviation and aerospace related maintenance services. That has been eliminated, our GRT. Number four, just passed and just signed into law by Governor Martinez. We now have a GRT deduction, a gross receipts tax deduction, for industries that are involved in photonics or directed energy, including those who might be doing satellite type work, et cetera. That tax has been reduced dramatically. Number five, we have also recently signed into law by Governor Martinez, a corporate headquarters bill. So that if you create a corporate headquarters here in New Mexico, or in the way we drafted the bill, if you have a division or some sort of consolidated administrative function in your organization, in your business, that would also qualify for a headquarters tax abatement. You will pay no corporate income tax in New Mexico if you have this administrative function, the centralized function, whether it's headquarters, division, or some sort of administrative function here in New Mexico. That tax and the corporate income tax has been eliminated. We also eliminated the consumable part of the gross receipts tax. The pyramiding effect that took place in New Mexico prior to this law, if you manufactured a, a, a product, was very onerous. We now have a simple, straightforward, one-time tax on your gross receipts uh, on if you manufacture something. So all of these things add up to a very, very good value proposition for this industry. And clearly the aviation and aerospace industry is a focal and target point for our state and for our state's economic development plan. Very much front and center. And many of these policies that I just covered were aimed at trying to promote private sector investment and private sector jobs here in New Mexico. But we didn't stop there. New Mexico now has one of the most robust closing funds, otherwise known as the Local Economic Development Act, LEDA. It's a closing fund that will help offset the land building and infrastructure costs for businesses that seek to locate here in New Mexico. 30 other states have this fund. Ours is very seamless and straightforward, and we use it quite often to try to encourage businesses to, to locate here in the state. Workforce. Workforce is a tremendous challenge for our entire country. We all know about the STEM issues. We all know about the dearth sometimes in many disciplines in which you all are involved. This is something that's very, very important to the state. It's one thing to be competitive when it comes to taxation. It's another thing to have to, any state, to be competitive when it comes to workforce development and some of the initiatives that we all grapple with around the country. Governor Martinez has instituted a series of reforms in the public education system, supports early college high schools that are aimed at certain industries, including this one. We also have a very aggressive job training incentive program, otherwise known as JTIP, recently ranked by Business Facilities Magazine, is the fifth best on-the-job training program in the entire country. How it's operated and how, it, how it's effective. We reimburse up to 75% of the first six months wages for an employee that is involved in manufacturing something or exporting 50% or more of its services. It doesn't matter if you're hiring one person or a thousand persons, you are eligible for this JTIP program if you are a company that fits into that criteria. All you gotta do is hire a, somebody that's been in New Mexico for at least one year of their life or have graduated from a New Mexico school, post-secondary school or institution of higher learning. That program is available as well. And Governor Martinez finally is looking at this upcoming session. We don't have the details set yet on further, furthering a customized training for industries like the aviation and aerospace industry.
So we've made great strides, not only in our competitive nature for taxes, but also when it comes to workforce development as well. I want to conclude my comments by saying that New Mexico's infrastructure, in my opinion, when it comes to this industry, is the envy of the entire nation. The intellectual capital that we have here from all of the institutions that we have, the national labs, the military facilities, especially here in Doniana County, White Sands, the White Sands Test Facility, NASA, the Spaceport America facility, which you all know about, the missile range, of course, is incredible. We have an incomparable climate for R&D and testing and evaluation. We now have a great climate for manufacturing. So from R&D all the way to manufacturing, there is no better value proposition than New Mexico. And our infrastructure, too, in my opinion, is unparalleled. Where we have to go, though, as a country and as a state, is to recognize that the competition that I see every day in my job, and it's an intensely competitive field, economic development, no doubt about it, is something that our country faces day in and day out. I am absolutely certain that New Mexico, when it comes to this business, when it comes to this sector, is the absolute best place to do, do work. We need to get our message out there. We need to promote ourselves. And we need to remind everybody that whatever success we've had in policy changes in this state, it's been done. And I emphasize this, and I know Governor Martinez would agree with this. It's been done in a bipartisan manner. These changes have been done because people have come together as a state, Republican and Democrat, to make these changes a success. And as we move forward with our efforts to diversify this economy, I'll never forget, nor will any of us should forget, the rich history that New Mexico's had in this aviation and aerospace industry, whether it's Goddard or Von Braun or certainly the wonderful advances that have been done by NASA here. We need to continue that legacy. We believe that we as a state are primed to continue that legacy so that not only others can benefit, but in the fact future generations will benefit as well. And that's our goal, that's our objective. And we will continue, as long as we're in office, to try to achieve those goals and objectives. And as always, should you have any questions about New Mexico, please do not hesitate to contact us, gonm.biz. I think it's a great website. I'll tell you everything about our incentives, the programs that we have. Please visit it. And if you have a minute, always come up to Santa Fe and visit with us as well. You're always welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dr. Hines, thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be back to my hometown. Still is. Got the best food in the entire state. And it's always great to visit. So thanks so much. Appreciate it. And uh, look forward to talking soon. Thank you. Thank you.